Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this flame game development series where we are making a simple platformer game using the flame engine. In the last video, we made the coins oscillate up and down using the move effect. And then we also made them fade away using the opacity effect on collision with player. And in this video, we are going to take a look at enemy movement. So if I open up level 2 in Tiled, you can see that we have these two enemies here. My plan is to make them move back and forth between their initial spawn point and a predefined target point. And to mark the target point of each enemy, I'll use a point object. While placing these target points, keep in mind that the origin for each enemy component is its top left corner. So when the enemy reaches its target point, its top left corner will be at that location. Ok, so now that I have placed the target points, I need to somehow specify which target point is for which enemy. And the best way to do that is to add this information as custom property to each enemy object. So let's create a new custom property. I'll name this as target and I'll make sure that the type is set to object. Once I do that, you can see that we can use this arrow icon to select any other object from the level. And if I select this point object, you'll notice that the target property now gets assigned an integer value. This integer value is nothing but the object ID of the point object that we just selected. And we can use this ID in the code to get the actual point object and then its position. I'll quickly add similar target property for the other enemy as well. Ok, so now back in our code, I'll add one more optional nullable vector to to enemy constructor called target position. Then in the level class, while spawning an enemy, we need to find out the target object and use its position as target position for the enemy. So first, I'll get the value of the first property from current spawn point. Again, since I know that each enemy will have only one property and it will always be an object ID to some other point object, I can write this without worrying about errors. Also. Since object IDs are always integers, I can safely convert the value into an integer using integer.parse. Next, using this target object ID, I can find the actual point object from all the objects of spawn point layer. For this, I'll use the first where method and in this callback, I'll just check if object ID of current object is equal to the target object ID that we have. I'll store the returned object as target. And then in the enemy constructor, I can set target position as a vector2 of target.x and target.y. Now back in enemy.dart, I can use this target position to make the enemy move towards that point. And to do that, I'll add a move2 effect to current component in the constructor. For move2 effect, we need a destination and an effect controller. For destination, I can use the target position. But since target position is nullable, I'll just make sure that the target position is not null before we add this move effect. Then for the controller, I'll use an effect controller with alternate and infinite set to true. And let's set the speed property to 200. Now let's run this and see how it looks. Ok, and as you can see, in level 2, the enemies are moving back and forth. But their speed is too fast. Let's change it to maybe 100. Ok, and just for testing, I'll also change the default level to level 2 in game.dart. And now the speed looks decent enough. But now you can see that the enemies are always facing towards right even when they are moving left. We can make them flip horizontally around center, but the problem is, right now there is no way to get notified when an effect changes its direction. For a normal effect, we could have used the on finish callback, but in this case of alternating effects, that callback does not get triggered. Hopefully this will be improved in future versions of Flame, but for now, we'll have to write a little bit of extra code to make this happen. Basically, instead of using a single alternating move to effect, we'll have to sequence two move to effects. One going from initial position to target position, and the other one going from target position to initial position. And for this, I'll use a sequence effect. This effect needs a list of effects to sequence. So I'll just use this move to effect as first effect in the list. 
and I'll remove the alternate and infinite property from its effect controller. Then as the second effect in the sequence, I'll duplicate this move to effect with destination as position. And as position is also nullable, I'll add a null check for that as well. Next, to make the enemies flip horizontally, I'll use the on finished callback and call flip horizontally around center for both the move effects. Now we can add the sequence effect to the current enemy and also I'll set the infinite property of the sequence effect to true. If we save this and check back in the game, you can see that the enemies are now facing in the correct direction while moving. But you can see that while coming back, they seem to overshoot the initial position. This happens because after flipping the component horizontally around center, its origin or top left corner also gets flipped by width of the component. And to account for this flip, we'll have to offset the destination of second move to effect. So to do that, I'll just add a vector 2 of 32,0 to this position, where 32 is the width of enemy component. And if I save this, you can see that now it works perfectly. Okay, now that the enemies can move, let's make them collidable as well. For this, first I'll add the collision callbacks mixin to enemy class. Then in the onload method, I'll add a circular hitbox with its collision type set to collision type dot passive. Then in the on collision start method, I'll check if other is player. And if that is true, I'll just print player hit for now. If I save this and open up the debug console, you can see that player hit gets printed when enemy collides with the player. Now just to make things a bit more visual, Let's try to add a hit effect to player instead of printing this message in the console. For this, I'll go to the player class and add a new method called hit. Inside this method, I'll just add a fade out opacity effect. Basically, I want the player character to blink for some time when it gets hit. So I'll use an effect controller with alternate set to true. Then I'll set the duration to 0.2 seconds and repeat count to 3. Now back in on collision start of enemy class, I'll replace this print call with other dot hit. Let's save this and go back to the game. And as you can see, the player character does blink for a while when it collides with the enemy. But I think the effect looks a bit slow. So I'll reduce the duration to 0.1 second and will increase the repeat count to 5. Okay, now it looks a little bit better. I might change this effect in future if needed, but for now, this looks fine. Anyways, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.